Okay, hi everyone. Um, welcome to my latest webinar um, with uh, FX Street. Um, this is me, Richard Perry, Market Analyst at Handtech Markets. Um, this webinar that I'm going to be hosting is on Stochastics. Uh, Stochastics is uh, the, the third of my three momentum indicators that I want to talk about with you and um, just hopefully give you more of, a, of an insight into how I use them um, and how you can also use them to get uh, better trading signals and um, just, uh, yeah, just better uh, strategy anyway. So that is um, what we're looking at today. This is, first of all, a bit of a risk warning. Um, I always give this up purely because I'm going to be talking about live market information and it's best that uh, you just have a gauge of exactly why um, we need to have risk warnings. Uh, I'm going to put this up again at the end of the seminar, uh, webinar as well, so uh, you can read it then if you don't read it now. Uh, very quickly about me, um, I'm, uh, I'm an analyst that's been in the market for 13 years, actually thinking about it, coming up to almost 14 now. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I've been a technical anal analyst, I've also done um, market analysis on fundamentals as well, so I've sort of gauged a, a bit from both sides, which is good. I've got the STA diploma um, and also um, qualifications as well, so I'm hoping that that gives me the uh, the, the ability to be able to talk to you today about um, what we're going to talk about. Um, in terms of the agenda for today, uh, as per usual, a little bit of theory, um, different ways we're going to use stochastics um, because uh, there are different uses of stochastics in different markets, the different signals you can get with stochastics and also then I'm going to, as per usual, wind up with a bit of a live market analysis. As per usual, um, please ask me questions. Please, if you have any queries or anything, I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I will also uh, look at um, any, uh, any markets that you, uh, that you choose to, uh, that you would like me to look at. Um, I've already, already had a couple of emails actually from guys that I know that, um, that have been on the webinars before with FX Street and uh, they've asked me to look at a couple of um, markets so I will do that as well but uh, if, if you do have any others then uh, give me a shout and I'll take a look. Okay, um, I'm going to try and get through this as quickly as possible so we can look at the markets because, there's, again, there's a lot going on today. Right, stochastics. Um, stochastics are basically uh, the, the, the third momentum indicator that I'm going to look at um, after RSI and MACD lines. Um, it is uh, used as a primary indicator, but a lot of the time it's used in conjunction with the RSI. Um, and it gives you extra confirmation, I believe, with the, the um, with the RSI because it's it's also a momentum oscillator, and um, I think it, it gives a very good backup to the RSI. Um, RSI being my favourite uh, my favourite momentum indicator. Um, it is an oscillator, and it goes between zero and 100. Therefore, 50 is the neutral level, the uh, basically the mean line. Um, and there are also other trigger levels you have on the chart, which is added, um, which are added at 20 and 80, um, for uh, to give you different signals. Now, the basic premise um, with stochastics is that um, if you think about it in an uptrend, you want the price to be um, finishing the rain, uh, finish, finishing the period, or I'm going to, I'm going to probably slip in and out of the word daily, but um, anyway, it's easier. Um, you want, you want the uh, price to finish the day towards the high of the range. If it's in a strong uptrend, you want it to be closing towards the high. If, for example, you, you saw the, the price consistently in an uptrend, consistently closing towards the lower half or maybe the bottom of the daily range, that would tell you that um, the momentum, although uh, the price is going higher, the momentum is certainly not with the uptrend. So you'd be a little bit concerned with that. And stochastics give you a very good depiction of that um, of that situation. Um, so, yeah, that's why uh, they're good. And also in downtrends, for example, um, you would like the price to be closing near the lows of the trading range, of the daily range, um, which would imply downside momentum is still strong. As per usual, a bit of, th um, bit of uh, formulae. Um, this one's actually fairly simple. It looks easier than it. Um, sorry, it is easier than it looks. Um, it actually on the stochastics gives you two lines, a main line and a signal line. Um, and uh, within that, you've also got fast stochastics and slow stochastics. Now, I know a lot of you use MT4 as your trading platform. And um, 
they will give you as a default they tend to give you slow stochastics um slow stochastics are basically just the smoothed out version of faster fast stochastics now the two lines are basically percentage k which um is the real calculation of stochastics and then percentage d which is your signal line which is effectively a three-day moving average of the percentage k line now in the low in the slow stochastics you you then sort of smooth it even more so you get um percentage d actually is the three-day moving average which is becomes the me the main line and then you you um, smooth that further by another three days to get the the, um, the signal line in your slow stochastic. So it sort of takes it a little step further in terms of the uh, smoothing effect because stochastics can be quite volatile. Um, certainly the fast stochastics are as well, and that's why slow stochastics have been developed. Right, so let me just show you a quick chart with it. Right, so that's uh, that's your stochastics on sterling dollar. Um, you have got your main line, which actually um, is uh, is the solid line, and then that is lagged by the signal line. Obviously, as I said, it's a smooth uh, three day, effectively a three day moving average, which you can see it sort of lags that line and smooths it out. So the uh, the signals come often when you get crossovers of those lines and changes in direction. Okay, where is that annoyingly? Okay, right. Okay, you can change the um, parameters of stochastics as per usual with these momentum indicators. A lot of the time, you just um, the, the the best way of changing the parameters is just to change the number of periods uh, in the range of calculation. Now, stochastics, as with the RSI, uh, use um, fourteen days as as your calculation period. Um, but you can obviously change that. You can use, say, for example, 9 um, or maybe 21. I, I mean, it, to be honest, it, it is each to their own again. But as I would stress throughout all of my um, webinars is that if you change the parameters, you need to do your back testing. You need to have made sure that the, that the level you use works and you're comfortable. Uh, as I said, that is the, uh, they're the two lines. Right. Okay. What does stochastics show you? Um, basically, at the most, at the most sort of um, basic level, you've got falling stochastics suggest deteriorating momentum, and rising stochastics suggest improving momentum. Um, the, um, I suppose, you, the, it's the, as I said earlier, there are instances where you get uh, the where the stochastics turn lower, you could trade that in terms of um, or start to think about a change of direction um, to the downside. And when they start to turn higher, you would start to think about the uh, the direction of the trade starting to move again to the upside. So um, there are um, there are uh, also other signals that you get. You get crossovers um, where the main line crosses over with the signal line, and um, that will give you uh, sort of buy signals and sell signals, depending on which direction you're doing it and the level at which you're doing it. And I'll touch upon that in a bit. And also, um, I've got a little table here that just shows to you whereabouts um, in in the in the oscillation range, oscillating range, um, whereabouts the stochastics are travelling um, if they're um, if they're rising, say for example, um, if they're rising between 30 and 50, that would suggest you're unwinding a bearish configuration. Um, and similarly, if they're falling between 50 uh, and 70, then that's um, a situation where they are uh, unwinding a bullish configuration. Now, I will show you the chart um, very quickly because I didn't actually talk about this too much, but um, here is... Uh, here is that chart um, on the stochastics with different parameters. Now, um, just very quickly touching on it, I've got a 9, a 14, and a 21 here. Um, and you can see that the 9 is much more, um, much uh, more uh, re uh, reactive to the price action than the 14, and the 21 is the slowest. Um, you get your signals sooner, um, but you do run the risk of getting false signals. So uh, that is why um, we uh, just tend to be a little bit more cautious and use the 14 days. Right. Okay. So 
this is um, reading of the stochastics now. So when you're basically seeing the stochastics rising, you're obviously driving positive momentum, and therefore you'd be looking at rising price. Here we've got the uh, the, the stochastics in June 2014 on cable. Pretty much throughout the whole month, strong strong momentum, and with that you get the strong momentum on the um, on strong strong momentum and strong uptrend in the price. Now that starts to turn around when the uh, stochastics fall back below the the 80 trigger line, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute as being a uh, a sell signal. Um, and you then start to see cable in decline, and the momentum accelerates accelerates quite quickly to the downside. You then camp for over a month in uh, below 20. Now, below 20 is uh, a very, very weak momentum and very, or to look at it in another way, a very strong downside momentum. And th that is exactly what we saw in cable throughout the month of August. And to be honest, it still is going. Um, although you've had a chance to trade it in the meantime, because you did actually have a, uh, a buy signal here, but then you turned lower again. And I will tell you in a minute as to exactly how to use these trading signals on stochastics. Right. OK, now I sort of was going to touch upon it just then, but uh, just shied away from it in the fact that momentum indicators across the board are uh, are read differently in different markets so you need to identify the market that you're in if you're if you're in a trending market i either higher or lower or uptrend or downtrend the way that you use stochastics is different to how you use stochastics in a sideways market in a sideways market um you basically play the classic um crossover sell signals you use the extreme levels and you try to trade or you trade a mean reversion um basically you're looking to to sell when you get um, a signal in the uh, around the 80 level and you buy when you get a signal around the 20 level. Pretty simple. You, when you're in a trending market, you get different signals. Now, the in an uptrend, you basically you basically get um, – well, first of all, you need to trade in the direction of the trend. Um, and that is um, just a basic – that is probably one of the most fundamental um, things that I could say to you. Uh, in technical analysis is that you need to trade in the direction of the trend. Um, you need to, and the reason behind that is because in an uptrend, you want to be looking for buy signals because if you trade counter trend, that is the quickest way to make a loss, I believe, in a market because your your downside, your downside profit um, targets don't get reached. Um, before the buying pressure comes back in again on a, on, um, and uh, to negate your short position. So that is why you need to trade in the direction of the trend. Now, so therefore, in an uptrend, in a strong uptrend, you're looking for your bullish uh, signals. And uh, you're basically looking to back the rising stochastics. Um, so, yeah, you're looking for your bullish signals, but you get a, a gauge at which um, where these signals come because – you get different signals um, or different uh, triggers or trigger levels on the charts. And I'll show you now that uh, you need to just maybe have a bit of a play around with the different levels that you'd be looking to get back in because this is, um, this is Dolly Yen over, well, 2012 to 2000, mid-2013 in a massively strong uptrend. All the way, big strong uptrend. Now you're you're looking for buy signals within this uptrend because trading against this, the trend is um, a very risky strategy. So, where your buy signals? Well, I would argue that in a strong uptrend, your stochastics are going to be not coming back towards the 20 level because, as I said earlier, the 20 level is basically where you get bearish momentum. You have to then think about possibly changing your trigger levels so in an uptrend you would instead of buying around the 20 level you'd think about buying around maybe 40 or 50 um which is what we've got here we've got the buy signal in february 2013 where you've got a crossover and i will take you through crossover buy signals in a bit but that is your buy signal in february 2013 you get another one at the beginning of april although you did actually come back to 
20 in that instance, but you're still in this uptrend, so uh, you sort of get away with it. You get another buy signal in the early May. Again, worked very well. Uh, again, that was around the 40 level. So you got three buy signals through through the latter half of that uptrend on the daily chart, and they've all worked very well. Um, and that is because you've started to think more about the trigger levels. Um, in a strong uptrend, you can play around with the trigger levels, bringing them higher. Alternatively, in a downtrend, actually that's the sideways trend. I haven't got one, annoyingly. Uh, okay, fine. Um, in a downtrend, you would look at it the other way. You'd start to think about um, your signal levels. Maybe um, instead of having your sell signals around 80, you would bring it lower to have your sell signals around 60. Um, why take profit in a trend? Well, basically, um, if you're in an uptrend, you're, you're looking at obviously riding that trend higher. The profit trigger in this uptrend is basically more to the fact that you're, uh, I'm going to sort of touch upon this in crossovers in a minute, but I could sort of start it now anyway. The, the crossover sell signals that you get in a strong uptrend are sort of warnings of potential corrections um, within the uptrend, and they give you another opportunity to uh, take a bit of profit off the table and potentially just stand aside whilst there is the building of a new um, buy signal. Now, you could argue why, well, you've, you've asked the question, uh, why take a profit in an uptrend? Because there is always there are always opportunities to trade in an uptrend. Um, you don't know how high that uptrend is going to go. You're basically using, this. stochastics are one of several signals, um, several indicators that you'll be using. And um, I've, I've uh, said for a while that um, the law of multiple confirmation is key in technical analysis. You need to be looking at different, um, a, low, a range of different signals uh, in order to make your decisions as to what you do. But this instance here where you get a, um, where you get a, a, a crossover sell signal, profit trigger, is basically where you start to think, okay, well, is this, is this going to be um, an, a chance to lock in a bit of profit and then maybe get in back in at a lower level? If that trend is going to continue, then maybe that is still going to be a good idea because you all, you will often get corrections within an uptrend. And for that reason, um, unle unless you're going to be basically buying and holding or just for the long term, in, in this instance, this uptrend lasted a, a matter of six months, you could sit in one trade all through that six months or you could do a number of trades where you sort of play around with it a little bit. Obviously, we are looking out for different trading signals as well. So you'd be looking at watching out for RSI and also MACD lines as well, maybe individual um, sell signals as well on the um, on the on the uh, price chart, and um, you'd, there'd, there'd be a, a lot of signals that you can get you can gleam from this chart. It's not you'd not just be looking at the uh, the stochastic. So this is as I said earlier, this is sort of in conjunction with other indicators. Right. Um, okay. So on to sideways trending markets. As I said, you basically play in a sideways market if you. Once you've identified the fact that you're basically moving sideways, you're not going anywhere, you've continued to find support at the similar levels, you continue to find resistance at similar levels, you think, okay, well, we might as well trade the range then. And within that environment, stochastics are excellent, I believe, with trading the ranges. You look for the buy signals at or below 20. You look for the sell signals above or um, at 80. And in this instance of dollar yen, you've got... One, two, three, four, five signals on the down on the buy signals, and arguably, you, I didn't count this one, but you could have done easily. Um, one, two, three, four signals as um, sell signals. So you could have been long and short trading up and down um, throughout the period of this sideways trend in stochastic uh, in uh, in dollar yen, and made a profit pretty much every single time. Um, this is an excellent example on dollar yen of um, trading the stochastics in a sideways market. Um, this is, uh, well, um, to be honest, throughout um, all of my uh, momentum indicators uh, webinars, I've used dollar yen as an ideal example um, of, first of all, trends and second of all, sideways ranges and how you use, um, how to use those signals in different markets. And dollar yen is an excellent 
excellent um, instrument to use stochastic, certainly in a sideways environment. Not anymore, because we've broken out from this sideways range. Um, so therefore, you start to look at your tre your uptrending, um, your strong uptrend uh, signals. Now, in, in this instance, Dolly N has sharply deteriorated on the stochastics recently through this consolidation and subsequent breakdown. Now, for that reason, uh, for that reason, you are, I, I believe you're now beginning to look for the next bull, bull signal on your stochastics. Not happening yet, because the stochastics are still falling, but I think that you are looking for now the next bull signal, because I think that we're now entering into a bull phase, or certainly are in a bull phase on dollar yen. Okay. Okay, so uh, I've had a question about crossovers, so that brings me nicely onto the next section. If I can get my mouse to work. So, crossovers. Um, crossovers generally tend to work best in sideways markets. Um, as I said to you in that dollar yen um, uh, chart that I just showed you, um, and it it does depend on the market you're trading in because uh, your crossovers if they if you're in a sideways market your crossovers you're looking for around the 20 mark in a, in a trending market you can still use crossovers but they give you different signals um i believe uh say for example in a in a bull in a bull trend if you get a sell signal um, bearish crossover i would take that as a profit trigger i would not take that as a signal to go short because as i said to you you're not looking for sell signals or you're not looking to short into a down in, into an uptrend because that is i believe a very um risky strategy so you're looking for your bull crossovers in a in an uptrend and your bull crossovers are basically where the main line which is the lead line crosses over the signal line which is your initial indicator, which is down here. And then you move on to the confirmation, which is in this blue circle, which is where your signal line then crosses over this, the, your trigger line. I have my trigger lines at 20 in this instance of this example chart here. The trigger lines are at 10 and 90. I have mine at 20 and 80. But you get the same feel. Um, once the signal line crosses above 20, then that is your confirmation buy signal. Certainly, if you're in a sideways trending market, that is certainly your crossover um, buy signal confirmation. Um, and that is your trigger to get long. In uh, in similar way, um, in a bearish crossover, you have the similar fashion. You have your main line falling below your signal line. And then your signal line starts to fall back below your trigger line. In this instance, this instance is at 90. I have mine at 80. Uh, once your signal line crosses back below your trigger line, then that is your signal to get short. And I will show you that in the example I have here. Oh, okay. There's all of the signals. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, okay, so you've got in this instance here what are we looking at okay your buy signals so you you're in an uptrend so you're looking for buy signals and you've got your buy signal here so your main line has gone above the your main line has gone above your trigger line and then your signal line follows it to give you your confirmation and that is your buy signal this is euro dollar and the buy signal on euro dollar here works excellently well similarly you're looking for crossovers um, to give you profit triggers potentially and your profit trigger in this strong uptrend on euro dollar actually didn't work too badly again i stress the fact that you'd be looking at different indicators here so this is stochastics in isolation and your profit trigger which is your crossover here in a you, remember you're in a bull trend so a profit um, any sort of sell signal or bearish crossover is actually a profit trigger not a sell signal you have that bearish crossover so you think well maybe I'll start to take a bit of bit of profit off the table it's not a, not a bad idea because you do get a little bit of con consolidation but then you get a turnaround I mean I haven't actually signaled it here as an arrow um, 
But I did talk about this earlier because you're in such a strong uptrend. You actually get a turnaround around that 40 point and then you get the crossover again. So you would argue that that is actually another bull signal that, that means that you're, you're then into euro dollar in this up phase here. You then start to get another um, profit trigger, which in this instance works excellently well. So you then get the correction within that. You then get another crossover buy signal at the bottom. And I think you'll get the gauge of exactly um, the fact that uh, I think crossovers work pretty well on stochastics. So uh, that is pretty good. I like that. Anyway, so on to divergences. This is the second signal that you can get with stochastics. Um, you're looking for divergences. As per usual with um, momentum indicators, divergence makes a, um, is an important aspect of the, uh, of the move. Um, divergence is basically where, well, in a bullish divergence is where the price continues to fall to lower lows and uh, the stochastics start to make higher, a, a series of higher lows. Now, in a bearish divergence, which is the diagram that we've got here, again, you've got this price making higher highs. But the stochastics start to make a series of lower highs. Now, that is um, basically your divergence, in, and it just it just shows you that the momentum is not as strong as as we had seen previously. Now, as I said to you um, about the whole fact of the stochastics and the way that they're calculated, is in the in that um, you you want to be seeing uh, the price closing the day or, or the period towards the uh, towards the high to, to, to depict strong uptrend or and strong momentum but once the uh, once that starts to not happen and the stochastics will start to fall away and then hence you get a bearish divergence um, with the price still moving higher and I can show you that now in this instance here you've got bearish divergence here where the price is moving higher but you then start to see your stochastics in decline so you think okay well I've seen two lower peaks you, you've actually got on this and as well you've got a second sell signal and to be honest that at, at that sell signal you're probably starting to think about getting um, closing out your position anyway um, and then when you get the third lower high on the stochastics in conjunction with the higher high on the uh, on the uh, on the price then that would be definitely confirmation i believe that you're you're going to be rolling over and so it happens and you get a, a a nice bit of downside subsequently followed by a buy signal which gets you back in again you also get um across here you've got a bullish divergence where you've got lower lows on the price actually forming around that uptrend as well interestingly which gives you another buy signal that eventually you go back in on so that's by that's the uh, signals okay so i'm just um getting a couple of a couple of questions coming through here i'll just quickly go through them. but in divergence where do you determine the selling point question and where okay fine okay in the divergence where do you determine the selling point well as i said to you a divergence is just basically an ongoing situation and it's um certainly in this in this bull trend um it your your negative signals are warnings uh of a potential correction now one of the chaps said to me uh, on the on the chat well what um about taking profit in an uptrend well the, you, you may not be taking your profit here with these, these crossovers here and here, but to be honest, with the divergence, you're certainly beginning to think, well, there is something in this as a correction. Now, do you, do you trade the divergence and uh, use a crossover sell signal in that divergence? Well, it's possible because, annoyingly, okay, hold on. Okay, do you trade, do you trade the sell signal, which comes there? which is the crossover, as I said, you may well do on the second one. Um, 
basically you you use the crossover cell signals um as you deem fit really um you could argue that once you fall below the first low on that uh on that dip there which is a um, a failure swing you might start to think about the cell signal coming when wherever um you also get that third peak which comes around that arguably the resistance of that low so there there is there's a range of signals you get throughout this august period um where you are getting um where you're getting this uh, negative signal so you're so, you're thinking throughout this period okay the price is going up maybe other signals are beginning um haven't been giving uh, sell signals but they might be beginning to um and certainly the stochastics have been warning throughout august so it it depends on where what your what your trading outlook is how um how uh optimistic you are i suppose and what your other trading signals are looking at um whether you trade on one sell signal is an unlikely but maybe after the second and certainly the third you'd certainly be thinking about it so um it it just gives you something to think about i think okay so we've got again some uh, bearish divergences here price going higher and you get another sell signal um on the bearish divergence on the second peak in this um in this in- instance here you get your sell signal on your cross below 80 and it comes right at the top so you've got your bear divergence and you've got your sell signal in march and yeah this one works pretty well your ones um your your one in april and may work also very well if you didn't get out on this sell signal profit trigger which can't subsequently consolidated you i reckon you would have certainly got out here when you get your second sell signal with a lower peak so it's just um it just gives you more information i think on the on these bearish divergences and uh, throughout t- technical analysis momentum indicators i think bearish divergences tend to work very well as well so uh yes that is they are the signals that you get with um euro dollar now this is footsie 100 actually the a, a whole range of crossovers and sell signals that we've had now as i said the um stochastics do actually work very well in a sideways trending environment and footsie has definitely been pushed moving sideways for months and months now um and uh you've got a whole load of signals that you get within this um sequence so this is footsie zoomed out a little bit more to give you a good good gauge now okay so you get your first sil- signal here you actually got um a, a couple of buy signal uh, we well, didn't get a buy signal there so your first buy signal comes here on footsie in october 2013 and it worked very well stochastics went overbought you get a sell signal again works very well down 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 you then get a bear, uh, bullish divergence slight bullish divergence not massive um you, it's arguable whether you would have got in at this point on that on that bullish uh on that bullish crossover buy signal if you did um you would have possibly got stopped out but you would have probably got back in on it at a lower level anyway on the second one along with this bullish um divergence as well so you've got a second buy signal confirmed by the move above that previous high as well so you're actually then back into this trend you then start to get um the stochastics forming lower highs bearish divergence with these high highs in the price and then you get subsequently a confirmation sell signal and then you're back in this bit back in this down phase here so as you can see again with a sideways trading footsy stochastics work very well um so yeah that's uh, another one that works very well on now you could argue does it work on an hourly basis and yes it does um this is cable uh, back in july um in the fact that you you you've identified basically you've identified that cable is entering into a downtrend here um certainly confirmed i think by certainly that breakdown and subsequent rebound so on that rebound you then start to think about your sell signals and do sell signals work yes they do every single one of them worked perfectly on cable in july 
So you get a sell signal here, the crossover, then it, down, down, down. You get another sell signal. Actually, you're, you you would have had, I mean, depending on how you use these signals, again, I, I, I talk about profit triggers. Profit trigger in this instance on a shorting position. So you, you've sold it short and you then close the short. You get your profit trigger signal here. And again, you would have done well there. You get another sell signal here, which again, Actually, you probably would have gone sideways, but then you've got another confirmation sell signal up here in this trading day here, which subsequently works excellently, excellently well throughout this. OK, so you've gone higher. Stochastic sell signal arguably here because you're in a downtrend. So you look at the sell signals at lower levels, I would say. Um, so you've got a sell signal around this 60 point. And again, it works very well. Ultimately, just all these sell signals through through this period on, in July on on uh, cable works excellently well. So yeah, that's uh, another instance where on the hourly cable it all works very well. Okay, so um, that's sort of me showing you a few examples. Now I'm going to look at going to bring in um, a few. Um, a few signals over the past few um, few months on all the majors. Now I'm, I'm going to start with dollar um, with Thai Bart actually because I've been asked um, to have a look at it by someone. Um, so I'm going to look at it now. And this is Thai Bart over 2014. Nice downtrend, Thai Bart. Very strong. Um, and interestingly. If you look at these cable, uh, these candlesticks here, all coming up towards the bottom of the daily range, so you would have been getting a, a gauge of the negativity or the lack of positivity. Let me say, as I said, you start to see the the um, the price trading towards the low of the range, and the stochastics turn lower. So that is a that is again a, a an early indication, I believe, of um, the potential turnaround in the trend. And in this instance, we've had um, the dollar um, dollar, uh, dollar tie falling away. Now that's tie bar strengthening. Um, and it looks as though we're still, we've held on to this downtrend. And it looks as though we're co correcting certainly back to this key support over here, which is at 32.30, um, which is interesting because that is the old support became new resistance. Um, is now old, is now is now new support again. So 32.30. If you start to see dollar tie breaking below 32.30, I think you'd start to think about certainly putting short positions in because you're certainly testing this uptrend here at the moment. So if you start to breach that uptrend as well, then I think it's going to be going lower. OK, um, and one more from the uh, emerging Asia currencies. I'm going to look at the Indonesian rupiah, IDR. OK, you've actually got I zoom out. That's yeah, that's coming up towards that resistance, isn't it? So you start to think about the fact that we're just batting against that resistance and what are the signals showing you? Well, you've got the RSI which is beginning to turn lower. Although it still is positive, just um the stochastics are still positive, but you could argue also that you're beginning to see lower peaks in the stochastics, so that's a warning of uh, potential correction. And also the RSI just starting to just deteriorate as well. So this is um a warning signal, I would say. If you don't break out above that key high around 12.28, then I think you would start to be quite concerned about whether that is beginning to fall away again. Um, and uh, obviously, the dollar in the last few months has been strengthening significantly, and that is part of this run higher. 
But the dollar, as a as a general um, currency, is starting to show signs of correction. So perhaps with that in mind, and also batting up against this key resistance, you'd start to think about whether you'd be starting to take profits on any long positions um, with a view to potentially finding resistance at that key high. Okay, so that's my Emerging Asia stuff. Done. Right, okay, euro dollar. Now, what are we looking at here? Well, we've had a sharp recovery in the stochastics in recent days. Sharp recovery in the RSI, but... And I stress this, but um, this is all happening within a big downtrend. You've still got this big downtrend intact. You would argue that I suppose this sharper downtrend has been breached, which is a positive. However, I would still say that you're trading fairly negatively um, on these momentum indicators pretty much um, across the board. So you're, you're not looking for buy signals. You're, you're, you're still looking for sell signals. Um, you could argue that your signal a few days ago when the stochastics crossed back above 20 was a positive uh, signal. Is a positive signal and um, that would mean that you'd start to think about closing short positions. But look at this chart here. You've got 21 a day moving average. I've got no, no legend here if I stick that back on. Okay. Oh, what? What's going on there? That's ridiculous. Who knows? Anyway, regardless. Right, 21 day, that is the 21 day moving average, and that has proved resistance on several times actually through this. Um, through the last few months, and it looks to be forming that again today. Um, I would argue that this um, this chart is a sell into strength. Um, you've got significant overhead resistance, uh, overhead supply. Um, you would argue that that strength could be on this. Uh, look at this hourly chart. Okay, zoom out. Got a, a small head and shoulders reversal there, you could argue that that actually gives you an implied target from your 20, uh, 125 low. That gives you a, an implied target projected higher from your 127 uh, resistance to 129. And that could be where you're moving to. However, I do stress once again that in a downtrend environment, which clearly euro dollar is in a big downtrend, your upside targets tend not to be met before the selling pressure comes back in. So what is that? Right, that's better. Right, so you're in this big downtrend phase. The bears are definitely in control. This, I believe, is just a rebound within that uh, downtrend phase. So I think that you're looking for bearish signals, um, resistance coming in. Um, you're looking for your RSI to unwind back towards 50. You're looking for your stochastics to maybe maybe get towards 50 themselves. I mean, it's not far away from that now, 47 on the stochastics on the main line. So you, you're not a million miles away from this being, I think, a rebound that you'd start to think about selling into. So anything, any sort of sell signal, I believe that you get between maybe, maybe 128, 129, if it gets there at all, um, I would be looking to short that. Um, you've had a bit of a turnaround actually in this euro chart today already intraday back towards that 127 um, breakout support so that needs to hold currently down below that 126.90 so that is under pressure already so that euro dollar chart is already finding it difficult so let's quickly look at sterling again big downtrend big downtrend on sterling so you're looking and that even today that rally has hit the downtrend and fallen away again so again once um i think that sterling is a sell into strength um i don't see that uh, it's going to be going too much further um i think any sort of rebound into this uh, 6250 to 6280 mark is a chance to sell on sterling 
Um, I think uh, there is further downside that's going to be seen in due course, and I think this is just unwinding the um, the big uh, sell-off um, for further downside. And I think looking at these uh, momentum indicators, you'd probably argue that that is the case. The only thing you'd you'd point out here would be that the you've got a bullish divergence on the RSI. Again, I think that's just an early signal. I don't think that's anything to really get too worked up about at this stage because you've got the MACD line still very bearish stochastics. I mean, you've got another sell, sell signal around that 60 point in the, within that downtrend. So that's that worked excellently. You're now just unwinding that. And I think you're going to be looking for another sell signal on the stochastics. I don't think cable is going to be going higher. Um, what um, The question is, what is my platform? My platform is Reuters Icon. Um, which, um, unfortunately, due to the slowness of my computer, <laughs> uh, doesn't work especially well um, on when I'm doing these webinars, which is annoying, to say the least. But yes, it, um, it is a bit slow in that regard, but um, it is a good platform nonetheless. Um, OK, so Dolly Yen. Now, I spoke earlier about Dolly Yen. Um, I think that you've got this um, breakdown of this consolidation pattern i think that dolly n is now in uh, in correction mode looking at these momentum indicators rsi sharply lower stochastics and macd lines having given sell signals crossover sell signals i think that's profit trigger not a sell signal i think you would have um if i was trading um dolly n i would have already been uh, taking my profit on my long positions here um and I'm now looking for I'm now looking for the next buy signal on Dolly N, uh, and I believe that the buy signal is going to come around 107, uh, between 106.80 and 107.40. I believe is where you're going to get the next buy signal. Um, in you could argue uh, that that consolidation breakdown gives you an implied downside target of around about that 106 mark which again is around is minor support around 106, but it's still above this key breakout level. And I think that key breakout level, which I think was 105.40, yep, 105.40, uh, that key breakout level um, is certainly the, 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 the suggestion to me that we're in a, a bull phase. Now, looking at these stochastics, I think we're definitely in a bull phase, and it's just a correction within that phase. Um, I think all the momentum indicators are just showing that. So you're looking, in my opinion, for the next bull trigger on uh, Dolly N. I think you might get some near-term downside, as I said, back towards 107, but that is where it would be looking for on that. So I'm going to finish off with gold because I've talked quite a long time, unfortunately. A lot of people look at gold, and gold has been rallying, um, sharp rally, actually, in the last few days. Now... I'm going to zoom out quickly, show you that low came pretty much bang on these these the two lows here from two kilos from June 2013, December 2013, and now June uh, September 2014. Now, I have been reading uh, certain analysts that believe this is a big triple bottom going on here on gold. And I'm not going to go that far. I think there's a lot to be done um, before we start thinking about this being a massive base pattern on gold. Um, for one, that 1240 resistance, which is that key low back from. Oh, why is that go away? Um, that's that key low that we had back in June this year. That is now the big resistance. Also, you're fine. You still, I mean, you could argue, I mean, that 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 gold price is actually now corrected quite sharply in the last uh, in the last hour or so, uh, which is interesting. A um, couple of hours, sorry. Um, but yeah, I still think that that's a rally that's starting to get into resistance, big resistance. 1234.80, big resistance there. Today's high at 1233.20 interesting um 12 40 60 is that big overhead resistance but even then you're, you're still looking at 12 60 and 1280 being big levels i just think that he's got an awful lot to do to before um the bulls can think that they're in control looking at these momentum indicators arguably just unwinding an oversold position so you're looking for next sell signal i think on um on the rsi which is only back towards 47 
any 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 time the RSI unwinds from oversold towards fifty, I think you've got to be thinking about the next sell signal again. MACD lines, you're in a big bear phase, so you'd argue that the cross any a crossover is just a profit trigger on a short position rather than a buy signal. So you're looking for that to unwind and give you a new sell signal. And yeah, I think uh, it certainly looks like it's just unwinding from this oversold position at the moment, and I stress that at the moment. Now, I've had a question about the big, big triple bottom I was talking about. You've got to go back a long way. Here, yeah, this is basically gold over the past two years, and you've had these big sell-offs finding support around 1180. So you'd certainly need a break above that reaction high at 1391. Um, and in an ideal world, that reaction high around 1431 as well, um, before you can even start to think about, well, because uh, other than, uh, bef until you see the breakout above the high, you're still just in a consolidation phase in a long-term perspective, and that is, um, uh, that is where we're looking um, on this chart. That is a long-term perspective, but this rebound that we've had is, is small fry compared to what we've seen. And there's big overhead resistance. And I think that um, ultimately, I'm still expecting debt further downside pressure. I think gold is um, still um, in a bear phase. And I don't trust this rally to be going too much further. Right. OK. Um, I think I'm going to wrap up there, to be honest. Um, OK, so I do my own hand tech webinars um, on our website if you want to sign up handtechfx.com forward slash webinars also you've got a load of research on my website as well um, I do a daily comment a daily morning report I do um, intraday comments and uh, I do a strategy report on a weekly basis as well so there are lots there's lots for you to look at um, my twitter handle is at handtechrich and any questions um, if I haven't been able to uh, answer any questions I will look at them um, in uh, in spare time um, and just email me marketing at handtechfx.com and uh, you we can uh, have a look um, little brief thing about handtech markets generally London based broker with um, we do 100% STP execution competitive spreads MT4 current X um, as I said we've got free daily reports and also here we go. This is, could be interesting for you. We, you can sign up to the FX Trade of the Year, which is something that we are running with FX Street um, as a promotion. Um, it is a, a demo platform basis, and uh, you've got the chance to win ten grand, uh, ten thousand dollars, which um, in uh, uh, in a uh, a funded account. So that would be a good prize. So go to our website and have a look um, and sign up. I would say because. Uh, you can test your skills. Anyway, so um, I think that is uh, that is enough for me. Um, that's the risk warning again, just in case you would missed it first up. And I wish you um, good luck in in uh, in your trading. And I will um, speak to you soon. Thank you very much.